Hey. Oh, good. That's all I can take, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's episode... 102. Yeah. Hey. Great job. On Great. the stick. I didn't yeah. even know that. It's a full guess. That was a, a wonderful guess. I guess now it gets a little easy for a while because once you you knew you we clicked above a hundred. Yeah. And there it can only be of a, a number of numbers after one hundred that we could have gotten to. And it can't be uh 120 because there aren't that many songs. Yeah, I think there are. Man. I think it's like 117. It might be. Yeah, we're getting close. We are getting close. getting close. Now, we've had some bottle episodes and some real B-sides. So yeah. we, might, we might eke out a few extra. Yeah. And we're uh, not that far from Alex and Jim Analyze Bread. So. Hey. <laughs> Just the Greatest Hits album? Uh, and I that should be all that exists, I think. <laughs> Oddly enough, that's the only album I've ever heard of them having. I watched a video by the Professor of Rock, just to drop him a little plug. He's very entertaining. The Professor of Rock analyzes music, too, but he does any band just what he feels like talking about. Sure. And also, he sometimes gets members of the group on his show, so. Well, baby steps. Yeah, and he does this thing where in the intro, he doesn't tell you what he's going to talk about. And he'll go, this band was a giant hit, and then their lead singer got convicted of murder, or whatever the thing is. That not, But not always that, but one time that. Um, <laughs> but the intro for Bread was, this band was one of the most influential bands of the 70s, and then just stopped and disappeared. Yeah. Why did that happen? We're going to talk about it in a minute. Wow. Why did that happen? Uh, watch the episode. He's pretty entertaining. Guess, yeah. We shouldn't spoil it. Drive it's a good watch. There. He's the professor of rock. He's the professor. And my Lord, he deserves to be called professor of rock because he likes rock and he's a fucking nerd. He just is. <laughs> in terms of knowing every damn thing? And every and his entire personality and countenance he's lovely he's just got these glasses on he's really into the minutia he does fucking research jesus this guy <laughs> i love this guy Great. inspired by that uh well first of all you picked the song what did you pick i picked uh my favorite karaoke song uh new york state of mind that is your favorite karaoke all that's right the one I, that's my go-to it's very hard, but I can still get there. That's a good song. It's a good How high? Song. Huh? It's a good ass song. How high do you think this song charted when it originally went on uh, was released? Oh, I'll bet not very. Cause it is just like a blues song. I don't know. Do you know the answer to that? I do, because I was curious. I would say it got into the 30s. That's a great guess, and you're just about there. Did a little bit better. 24. No, 24. Nice. Okay. That's what surprised me, because I thought that feels too high, because I thought the same thing you did. Yeah. I'm surprised it charted at all. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, do you know who else did, in the 90s, a song called New York State of Mind? It was actually called NY State of Mind. <laughs> I will say, Eddie Money. That's a great, well, I don't know. Is that a great guess? I don't know. It's a passable guess. It's a fine guess. It's NY State of Mind is a hip hop song. Oh, wow. Was it Jay Z? It was Nas. Nas. Oh, Nas. I thought you were saying it was not. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Well, it was not, and it was Nas. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, Nas. Nas has a, a chicken restaurant near our house. That maybe Is it we'll... good? It's a, not my jam. Okay. So a lot of here... people think it's very good, but I don't care for the sauce. 
So here's what I will say, a pet peeve of mine, and then I will speculate about his chicken restaurant. Very well. I don't like when people name newer songs after a well-known song we fucking know exists. Yeah, that's exhausting. I don't like that. Like Man Eater. We talked about this before. Who did that? Oh no, it's that's who does Man Eater. Yeah. Not you, lady. I'm I'm lost. Who did it? Ah, uh, let me see who did this because it's a lady and she's got a nice voice, but come on, this is already a song. <laughs> Let's see. Who it's did tough. it? The thing is you can't copyright a title. Did you know that? I so. didn't. It's no, I'm kind of even madder. It's Nelly Furtado. <laughs> who, who you wouldn't think of as a man eater? No, try to think. Not, no offense, I try to think of Nelly Furtado as little, little as possible. Lord, yeah, well, it doesn't come up much. Yeah, I'm like man, and it's a fine song. I'll take your word for it because I can't. Except the the whole time, I think there's already a song. <laughs> think of your own shit. Yeah. So here's my speculation about Nas, who did a song called New York State of Mind in his uh -huh. chicken restaurant. I bet he uh, has some advertisement about it, secret herbs and spices, and you're just like... Oh, Already right, that, man. Yeah, that's why people call me the colonel. No, they don't call you the colonel, Nas. <laughs> There's already a guy. Dude. Quit sampling other people's restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'd be really funny. Is like, no, we've copyrighted this dish. No, we at least sampled your dish. Oh, that's sampled really funny. It, so it, it's cool. <laughs> so the way they do it is they go to KFC, buy a bucket, bring it over, and put that on your plate with the things okay. they also make. With two more herbs and spices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now Lord. it's my Now it's my recipe. That's right. So let's do some pre- talking about the song, talking about the song. Because this is New York State of Mind, which is a big deal. This is a big deal. Um, gets played here an awful lot, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, if you walk across the Brooklyn Bridge, like we do occasionally, you will hear the uh, Jay-Z and Alicia Keys thing about New York and this song an awful lot. Living in New York. That's that song, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a good song, too. Now, this song is off of what album? Turnstiles. This is off Turn of the album Turnstiles. This is Turnstiles, where he is moving back to New York from L.A., right? Yep. Had enough of Los Angelinos. <laughs> He's a New York state of mind. I read some first. I read some trivia about this song because I was just like, oh, I think I'm going to try this episode. And uh, I liked. He got the idea for the song on the Hudson River line. What it says, he literally was doing that. He was taking he a greyhound. Yes. Huh. That's a real thing, which is funny when you consider how many songs like Ballad of Billy the Kid and whatever aren't even close to reality. Right. This one's right there. But this one is about a real experience and described it as pride, which is nice. The pride he had in moving back to New York and what he thinks about New York, which is just kind of lovely. Um, I, like he does say in the song that it comes down to reality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, side note, by the way, uh, there I saw a clip of some jackass who um, works for OWN, that network. Uh -huh. And they were, did whatever nonsense they were talking about, but they did that thing where they occasionally tell on themselves and they were broadcasting from New York and said some, something more or less to the effect of, Oh, I expected to see more chaos and crime because they have believed all of the nonsense. Right. Despite the fact that Fox News has its headquarters here. Yeah. All those idiots have fucking penthouses on the Upper East Side. 
And where if you really want to get murdered, and you know, I'm not saying I don't want to get murdered. Sure. Go to a red state that statistically. Oh yeah, go to fucking Oklahoma City. I like your chances yeah. a lot better. Yeah, and for less reason too. Oh, you'll get robbed. You can get robbed here. <laughs> yeah. Real good. But you can get robbed there. You can get robbed anywhere. Look, yeah. The numbers don't lie. It's pretty safe here. Yeah, it's peculiar that well, it's funny because there's a I don't remember what the thing is called, but there's a thing where a person tells a lie, somebody else repeats the lie, they tell it back to the first person, and then the first person goes, Oh, I guess that's true. And suddenly they believe this yeah. thing they made up. Right. It's a feedback loop. Yeah, just very fucking funny. Just it's very, very funny. funny. It's very funny when you live here and hear it from other people who live here. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You live here. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, know. like people will say you can get shot in Chicago, for example, and right. Chicagoans will say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're dumb. Yeah. If you do certain dumb things. Yeah, I when I lived in Chicago, I rode my bike. First of all, it was just a dumb bike, too, because it wasn't like a bike meant to be driven long distances. It was a just a kid's bike because I was like, I need a bike. And I drove through Cabrini Green. <laughs> nice. And you know what happened? Nothing. Got looked at, probably. I got yelled at some funny comments. <laughs> And I thought, I bet they think I'm a special ed kid on a bike and they're not going to do anything. <laughs> and I also thought, and if they do think that, they're not far off. Yeah. So That's sweet. Yeah, so nothing <laughs> happened. Yeah, Something almost that. happened when we filmed in an abandoned warehouse and we got chased with guys with guns. That was bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, I haven't had but, that. Yeah, Where was that? It was... In Chicago? Near, yeah, Chicago. It was near a, a place I worked. There was this abandoned warehouse, and Graham was filming the Ken Stryker movie about Ken Strike, the Ken Stryker cop movie. And so we were they were filming some gritty street stuff and you know, doing what you do, which is stealing locations. Yes, absolutely. And they were filming in this warehouse because oh great, we'll get this warehouse stuff. <laughs> It turned out there were other people interested in that abandoned warehouse. <laughs> no shots were fired, I presume. And they got away because what would have happened is they would have they would have had their camera stolen and whatever else is what would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, great. Yeah. So the other thing about New York State of Mind that it sticks out in my memory so vividly is September 11th, you remember september 11th and you're told not to forget um i remember when they did the television special to raise money afterwards yeah and billy joel played first of all i remember vividly the silhouette of tom hanks in a very in a very respectful part of the presentation yeah and billy joel playing that song and so much of that stuff you can get jaded about and you're like, why is this person here? And you don't want to be jaded because everyone's grieving, but it's still television. It's still Hollywood and it's still self-congratulatory. It's still all of that. But then Billy Joel sings this song and it was beautiful. So yeah. beautiful because he is from New York. He is a regular guy. He is a normal, problematic human being who yep. grew up loving that city. And it felt like probably the most real thing that happened. And it, I honestly, I think grounded the whole special. It made it real in, a, in the right way. Like, oh, people's intentions here are the right intentions. And we are grieving collectively. And yep. I, And on top of it, you're like, for those of us who maybe had forgotten about the song, which a lot of people maybe have, you went, oh, it really is a very good song. Yeah, and it's about a very real phenomenon, which is the New York state of mind. 
yeah more than just the city it really is a you know a lifestyle and a way of thinking and it was uh being represented by like a guy who's just you know embodies new york yeah it was beautiful i was thinking about this I'm actually working on a bit about it but i'm not there's no bit i'm just going to show you the thought which is i just suddenly found it so amusing how many of the things that New Yorkers are proud of when you talk to somebody from New York, like my buddy Walker grew up in Long Island. Yeah. And how many of the things they're proud of that you're like, so, so, you, you, so you're proud that you guys are rude. Huh. Yeah. And that's really funny. Yeah. They're proud of a lot of stuff. That's not great. Yeah. And I find living here, you will meet old New Yorkers sometimes, and they're mad that it, the city got better. <laughs> and they were like, oh, in the 80s, it was great because uh, you could get killed and there were hookers everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and drugs were being sold on the streets. And you're like, well, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Because you go to CBGBs and do cocaine in the open with a cop. It's also, uh, yeah. oh, that no, was better than this Disney bullshit. Yeah, I tell you, the greatest days in my youth were during that garbage strike. It was <laughs> so great. Oh, it's dunk so good. <laughs> it's very funny. I think about that with Chicago and the weird things people will brag about in Chicago. And Chicago definitely has an inferiority complex. For sure. I was just thinking about how funny it is when people will brag about the hot dog. Because <laughs> right. non-accomplishment. Non yeah, my joke has always been Chicago will brag about the hot dog, and they do make a good hot dog. You know who else makes a good hot dog? 7 Eleven. <laughs> yeah. The movies. A pot of water at my home. It's a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's not but, much to it. No, and yes, the year's got a good version of it, but... Yeah, and then the other thing they'll brag about is uh, how cold it gets. Yeah! They're like, oh, that's no good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys are... You know, they have a lot. There's beautiful museums and culture and art, and the people are so kind, but they just want to brag about it's super, super cold, but you can get a decent hot dog. Yeah. Brag about the architecture, which emerged out of stupidity, which is, I think, kind of funny. Yeah, there's a lot of good funny stuff about Chicago. Chicago's amazing architecture because you burned the rest of it down. <laughs> Isn't Chicago the only city I know where there's an insane story of it burning down that clearly is a myth? Nope, not a myth. It happened. Oh, it really happened. That's so great. <laughs> you know, prior to Elsie's cow burning down Chicago, people didn't eat cow meat. After huh. that, they were like, fuck these guys. Okay, we're getting them back. Yep. We're gonna eradicate them. Yep. Well before then, before then, the cow was the most common household pet. Yeah, houses used to be a lot bigger too. That's true. Very true. They started making them smaller because they're like, we don't need cow space now. Yeah. Having yeah. a cow in an apartment was problematic. Having an apartment cow was a problem. <laughs> Never easy. But That's worth a it. lot. Yeah, it was. And cows are nice, but nope, that one cow ruined it for everybody. <laughs> everybody fucking dick. Mrs. O'Leary's <laughs> so, cow? Yes. It's Mrs. O'Leary's fault. That's Train right. your pets. Train, Train your, your goddamn pet. pet. Yeah, so many things in Chicago. Cows, goats, we got all kinds of farm animal stories. <laughs> All right, before we get into it, just to give you an opportunity. So I thought about the 9-11 thing, which really, not a joke. I found that just very moving. Yeah. Any other sort of related to this song? I know karaoke, you said that. Any other ancillary thoughts before we get into the song? Because I love this I song. I would say, I think I especially love it because it is also my story a little bit. Oh. I lived in L.A. for nine years, sort of spinning my wheels, not really doing anything, not really getting anywhere with my little career. And then I got the job at SNL and I moved to New York. 
And so, I mean, obviously the difference is he was moving back and already yeah. was embodied New York and I was learning it. And now I've been here tw over 20 years. Yeah. I really feel like it's my city. And I oh. never had a city before. <laughs> LA doesn't belong to you. No. Um, you're there. So no, LA aggressively Carol. doesn't belong to you. <laughs> no, it doesn't care for you. Yeah. How long were you in New York before you thought, maybe didn't even think, but that now that you analyze it as having been here, when was it? When did you feel like, oh, I, I, this is just who I am now? I'm a New Yorker. It's funny when you talk to New Yorkers, they all have a lot of rules about who's a real New Yorker and who's not. <laughs> and it's usually you hear like seven years. If you lived here seven years, then you're a New Yorker. And some people say 10 years. And some people say you had to be born here. Um, I felt like I moved here and was immediately working at Saturday Night Live, <laughs> which feels like the exact center of New York City. Yeah. on a Saturday night when you're on the floor with Lorne and all these New York celebrities <laughs> doing a live show from the middle of Midtown. Yeah. I was like, I feel like I'm a New Yorker pretty quick. <laughs> like I was definitely adopted, not native. Yeah. But I got stuck right in the center of it. Wow. And, you know, when I'm standing on the floor and they're playing the opening theme, to SNL, <laughs> you're like, all right, I don't know what else I got to do. Wow. Um, it's pretty great. That's fantastic. But it really, yeah, it did take, once I bought a place here, then I was like, well, you got to call me a New Yorker now. Absolutely. Lord, I that's own, pretty cool. I own a thing. Um, have you, I'm sure you have, do you remember meeting an LA native? Because that's a, that's a subgenre of the, the person who was born in LA, yeah. not always, but a lot of times, if, if if the subject comes up, has a little bit of an attitude. Yes. Um, or, it, or the opposite. They're very, they don't seem like an LA person. Right, yes. They're just like, oh, I don't, don't really care about show business or I'm a teacher. <laughs> you know, they uh, are not interested in the artifice of the city they're very annoyed by it they're like i just want to live my life here <laughs> yeah and almost always um their parents came to la to be in show business and it didn't work out or it did yeah um, but it, they're rarely like third generation yep it's always like i'm a first generation la native Here's the human being I think embodies if there is a true LA person, it's Gwen Stefan. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see that. She was born there. She had her dumb ska band there. She's <laughs> amazing. That band, I whatever with that band, that band would go nowhere if Gwen Stefani wasn't in it. No, of course not. And they didn't realize that even when they were being successful, they're like, yeah, we're successful for lots of reasons. No, you're not. No, no. One reason. You are successful you. because you met this 16 or 17 year old girl and she joined your dumb band. Yep. My favorite story of that band is the dumb guy in the band who broke up with Gwen Stefani because it's like, <laughs> I can do better and had regrets forever. And they're a very amusing regrets because he did regret it. <laughs> Fantastic. That's probably you... similar to what happened to Brad. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to go. <laughs> yeah. They tell yeah. me what again, the rock professor. Yeah. Professor of rock. Professor of rock. Nothing like he... an of to yeah. elevate the station. I made this very funny video. I'll link it. I'll link to it in this episode that I, I put out this video where I, I'm i supposedly a, an expert in something, but I just keep cutting to my sponsors is the joke. Okay. I got that from watching The Professor of Rock because it's just, it, it's glaring when he does it. And I don't mind because he's paying his bills, but he'll be like, you know, Sammy Hagar was blah, blah, blah. But before I do that, I want to tell you about the guys who made these uh, frames. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And 
I, I don't mind because you're paying your bills, mister, and I love you. You're great. But it just was funny. So I made this video where I keep cutting to weird. I also just found, I don't know who is the one who's like, they'll mail you frames. How many frames do you need? <laughs> oh, the best. Is that a thing? But listen, let us talk about New York State of Mind, a genuinely beautiful song and uh, thanks, by the way, for the uh, story. That's a fun story of you just starting SNL. That's fun. Yeah, that was fun. God damn it. Uh, yeah. That is, it's a nice thing to have in your head, whatever memories you got. I hope sure. I keep mine for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I like your chances. Uh, sometimes I don't. When my brain does a thing where I can't remember a word, and then I'm like, oh, eggs. I wanted eggs. Oh, it's starting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, turn sales. Do you want to start or should I start? Uh, why don't you start? Oh, well, you're very kind. Uh, by the way, flawless shape of the lyrics. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. There's just nothing wrong with this. This is like plenty of lyrics, but not too many. Some folks like to get away, take a holiday from the neighborhood. I've always liked the use of the word neighborhood in here because... It's very clear he he means an actual neighborhood. Yeah. I also he like mean, the idea of taking a holiday from the neighborhood. Yep. Hop a flight to Miami Beach or to Hollywood. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't say that I love the way he says Hollywood in the song. Mm -hmm. I just like that. And then here's the inspiration. But I'm taking a Greyhound on a Hudson River line. I'm in a New York state of mind. There is just not a damn thing wrong with this. It's it's not even very poetic. It's just very chit chatty, but in a very nice. I mean, it's just lovely, just clear cut. I uh, also sets up immediately sets up. Some people L.A., some people like this. I like this. And it's that New York thing where it's like. Um, not the beach or glamour. I'm going to ride a bus <laughs> the river because that's what us New Yorkers like. And yeah. I prefer that. I prefer this shitty mode of transport next to this filthy river. Yeah. That's the New York state of mind. And you know, it's interesting now. I had this experience with Tucson. Uh, you lived in Tucson for a bit. I did too. Good. When I have visited, there are things about it that are just plain stupid <laughs> that I find I have romantic feelings for when I visit. Yes. Are they the I... things you thought you would have feelings for? No. No, right? Nope. I feel that way when I go by in the downtown area, the Suntran bus terminal. <laughs> and they have the very brightly painted uh, wrought iron situations. And, yep. I, and I think, oh, that's nice. He never took a Santron, <laughs> Santron bus. Um, only went by that station a few times when I lived there. Yeah. And when I see it, I'm like, ah, oh, damn, Tucson, baby. Yep. When I go downtown, the thing that I find that I find a romantic feeling for downtown Tucson is that dumb tunnel you have to go through to get there as if it's a different place. But that's how you have to drive there. Yeah. And that's dumb, inconvenient. And then when you visit, you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. You got to go through this dumb little tunnel. Yeah, I think maybe you're just happy to be in the shade for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. You never, when I lived there, I never thought, why is this a tunnel? But when you go back, it's like, oh, this isn't necessary. It's it just really... an underpass, really. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing about it makes sense. I do love the, I think it's called the Hotel Congress. Yeah. One of the oldest still functioning hotels from like the turn of the century. Yep. Absolutely I recommend beautiful. anybody, huh? Absolutely beautiful. Anybody who, 
I stayed there. I'm very glad to say that I was actually able to spend a night there because I went back to Tucson to do a show and they put me up there. Cool. And the rooms are ridiculously small. Yeah, they are tiny. I stayed there once too. For and like I a, loved it. It was great. And it's it, a it, I recommend anybody going to that hotel mainly because it really is just like you you know you could go to old T Tucson for old west facade. This was a this was actually more like what the old west was. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, but now we're in a New York state of mind, not a Tucson, so. No, but we get it. Look, I've seen all the movie stars in their fancy cars and their limousines. Been high in the Rockies under the evergreens. But I know what I'm needing and I don't want to waste more time. <laughs> I'm in a New York state of mind. It's a good burn to say waste more time. Yeah. Is it Living in L.A. is a waste of time. <laughs> um, whether that's literally true or not, that's how it sure feels an awful lot of the time. Yeah. A lot of your life in L.A. is wasted time. Yeah. Fucking car. Cornered at a party by somebody who thinks they're an actor. There's so much time where you're like, I wish I was using this time instead yeah. of having burn in front of me. There are so many people, too, in L.A. who will talk to you about a project. And yeah. it's even a project you're interested in. And it takes days, sometimes weeks, to realize they ain't got no money and it ain't nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. They're excited. Yeah. Uh, because if you're not excited, you get run over. Um, that was a hard thing for me in L.A. because, you know me, I'm not excited much. So I got talked over a lot. <laughs> oh, Shiza, yeah. Oh, Shiza is right. Uh, yeah. Um, fancy cars, limousines, fine. Been high in the Rockies under the Evergreens. So, he, you know, even in L.A., he got out of town. Yeah. What do you think? that is? Was he in Big Bear? I, I bet. I bet he went to Big Bear. I mean, I'm sure it was nothing great. I'm sure, well, not that. I don't mean, yeah. Big Bear, fine. I'm sure it wasn't like actual like roughing it. <laughs> no. Yeah, no one, no one likes that in L.A. No, and again, I will say, been high in the Rockies under the Evergreens. The way he sings that is so great. Oh yeah. Top of his powers vocally with this song. And the melody, listen, nailed, nailed top to bottom because the melody for this is so great. And I don't think there's a misstep anywhere. Um, we'll get to the point where it changes, I guess it's called the bridge, right? It's the bridge. Uh -huh. The bridge works and it doesn't always work. But wow, this is a beautifully constructed song. This The bridge belongs in this song. And that is not true of every Billy Joel song. <laughs> Very much not true. Often Man. it seems like uh, a piece of another song that he didn't finish. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Now, then he goes here. It was so easy living day by day. Just stop and appreciate just that simple line. It's a good line. It's a good description of life in L.A. too. It really out of touch with the rhythm and blues and knowing his love of rhythm and blues, knowing his love of music, knowing his love of authentic musicians, which even in his induction speech for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he gave love to. Yeah. And I imagine also just missing musicians in New York, which is definitely a different vibe than the Jackals trying to get famous in L.A. Yes. Out of touch with the rhythm and blues. And then my friend Walker, this is his favorite line. But now I need a little give and take. The New York Times, the Daily News. It's Walker's favorite line. And he explained to me, as I would just kind of understand, he goes, that's literally two different ways of looking at things from two different papers. <laughs> yeah that had competing agendas and that's a good thing. 
Well, he's a real wonk when it comes to like he loves print media and he's a he's very big on he's educated about politics in a way I just never will be because right. I don't want to be. <laughs> Fair enough, but yeah, no, that's very true. It's like uh, the intellectual paper and then sort of the working man's paper. Yeah, um, but I I think the point is more eloquently made with I need a little give and take. I need to like argue with people. Yeah. I really get in my way. I need to get in other people's way. Um, you're very isolated in LA. Oh, yeah. Um, it's nice to fucking, he wants to spar. Yeah. The That's way it was described to me one time when I first moved to LA, and this was obviously from the perspective of coming from Chicago, but it's a similar idea, which is that in like New York, People may very well be rude to you now and then, but they also might help you if you need it. Yes. In LA, people will be very, very nice to you as they watch you bleed out. There it is. Yes. Well said. Here, people will help you up and make fun of you for falling down. Yeah. They will help you up. Yeah. And in LA, they'll just be very nice about not helping you and also film you yeah their phone yeah look man it comes down to reality again yes <laughs> that's what new york comes down to yeah you face realities all day long yeah and it's great and it's terrible but it's great and it's fine with me because i've let it slide I don't care if it's Chinatown or up on Riverside. I don't have any reasons. I don't know what that means. I've left them all behind. I'm in a New York state of mind. So here's what I think that means. I don't have any reasons. I think reasons you could say is or excuses. Mm, maybe. Or stories I'm telling myself. <laughs> I'm just right now being really in the moment where I'm supposed to be. That's how I interpret that. I like that. I also like uh, Chinatown and Riverside. Yeah. Two versions of New York. Yeah. Um, not wildly different, but I guess enough. <laughs> yeah. So Chinatown fucking sucks. Sorry. Does it? Not in a racist way, but it's it's bad. We'll check Dangerous, it out. Dangerous, dirty, or just no, what? Just uh, somewhat dirty. Definitely very annoying. It's very close to Canal Street. Okay. And Canal Street is where all the people are selling their bootleg merchandise and like fake Rolexes and all that jazz. So you, you get yelled at a lot and there's people in the way. Uh, and it's gross and dirty and loud. And the streets are smaller in Chinatown than the rest of the city somehow. But older streets, I like, assume. It's also you got to see it. Yeah, older and older across, streets. I'm assuming. Older streets, yeah. It's in sort of the south half of Manhattan. Yeah, and and what in the middle of Chinatown here is Little Italy. <laughs> it's the wildest <laughs> setup. <laughs> it makes sense. It's just waves of immigrants that came through. Yeah. Or there was a north half of Manhattan. Now, Little Italy probably, at least at some point, was probably the best place to get Italian food. Is it still? It's not. Okay. But you can get, it's, you know, obviously, you know, the touristy vibe took over for the most part. You can yeah. still get pretty amazing Italian food there, but someone has to tell you which restaurant to go to. Right. <laughs> That's so what I would have. Amazing Italian food everywhere now you like italian food yes i love the italian food <laughs> i, I forgot it. about you forgot about your yeah. authentic accent we're out here in uh, clinton hill brooklyn and on our corner there's an italian restaurant called belly that is some of the best italian food i've ever had in my life oh lord okay good because i want that oh we'll be going there i love italian food oh and yeah. I can't get it very often with my lovely wife because of her very L.A. gluten allergy. Ah, uh, yes. By the also way, gluten popular. allergy, 
Huh? Those are popular here too. The gluten allergy, by the way, is an allergy. Hers is very bad, and it doesn't matter how bad it is. Uh, most people aren't sympathetic. No, no, because it, uh, it was a it was a uh, craze for a while. Everyone, yeah, had. there's too many nitwits who don't have one who just said so. Yeah, one of my oh my god, god, I still love that uh, SNL fake commercial. I, if you remember it, where it was a pill for your fake condition. Oh, great. And it was, I'm not allergic to gluten, but I say that I am because, <laughs> and one of the ones, I'm I I'm not allergic to smoke, but I like to say it because I don't like when people smoke around me. Right. Do you remember that one? I do. God, that was funny. And <laughs> uh, it was right in the, in the beginning of that nonsense. It's just very funny if at some point people were like, you know, I tell people that I'm uh, diabetic because I people shouldn't be eating sugar and then ruined it for the actual diabetics. That's what happened to gluten allergies. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was so, you know, a repeating lyric isn't always great. It's wonderful in this si song. Yeah. It was because so it easy. sung very differently. Yeah. And it's so nothing about man. I gotta say, this is one of those songs that I cannot find a simple complaint, a single complaint. It was so easy living day by day, out of touch with the rhythm and blues. It's just, and it feels almost like something you never hear from Billy Joel, which is him relaxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not his move, but it is in this song. It just occurred to me how. Saying it was so easy with disdain i think he didn't yeah. like it being easy yep yep it's so obnoxiously easy to just live day by day like <laughs> and to end up with nothing at the end of that easy yeah and to just be in a bad mood and move back to new york I got to tell you, so like I have been in a number of movies and I've been in a number of little television spots and every now and then somebody I know in my little day job will find out about it and I hate talking about it. Sure. I try to avoid it because yeah, that makes I'm sense. Like, to me. Say it again. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I, most, and I'm sure they're like, I would love to talk about it if I was in them. I'm like, yeah, but if you were in them, you would now know how little difference it makes. <laughs> yeah. I love all of them as experiences, and I love and I'm proud of the work that I have done, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, so I'll keep that part. I'll keep the pride and the joy I get from doing work that I enjoy and is good. Yes. But none of that puts a dollar in my pocket. Right. Yeah. And that's, and that's to me, this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I just would rather be where I feel good. Yeah. Comes down to reality. He says it again. Um, and then the last line, it's the only time he says this song again, or says this yeah. line again. Sorry. He ends the song with a repeated line. The perfect repeated line. Yeah. Back what is it? I'm just taking a Greyhound on the Hudson River line. Because I'm in a New York state of mind. It's flawless. <laughs> uh, like Piano Man, it has a... Uh, it's very similar to Piano Man in that it has a just purely lovely piano introduction. Yes. Yes. The intro is really and instantly nice. recognizable. Yeah. And I'll say this also, there are a lot of songs about this topic. Yeah. About how great it is to be in New York. And, you know, yeah. Sinatra did a bunch of them. Yeah. And every performer who comes out of New York does a song about it. And this might be, this is one of the top three. I, yeah. To me, I say it's the number one, although. I'm fine if anybody disagrees, but I'm pretty sure it just is. 
It's I to me it captures it most cleanly. And it also is great because it's just a bunch of burns on LA, which is a yeah. very New York thing. <laughs> yeah. To compare yourself to other cities. True. And having said that, I will say that I do love LA anyway, but I love LA in a way. Yeah. It can't we can't it doesn't get to your heart the same way. Yeah, I, but I think so. LA looks like um, somebody dumped out the parts for a city and didn't put it together. <laughs> so here's something I have said about LA. One of the knocks on LA is that nobody really cares how you're doing. Right. And much like the rudeness of New York, as far as a person who lived in LA, I, I'm like, oh, you're 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 wrong. That's a great thing. That is a great thing. Because yeah, uh, the one of the jokes I make is like nobody can, people are so disconnected with their real feelings, and L LA is the kind of place where I could commit suicide and it would be a surprise even to me. <laughs> where I'd go, man, I didn't even know I was sad. <laughs> I liked LA because you could be alone, which I like, and that's yeah. very hard to do in New York. Even if you are alone in your apartment in New York, you can hear 15 other people. Yeah. Walking by on the streets, coughing in the next apartment, somebody <laughs> stomping around above you. It's hard to feel alone. Yeah. So maybe that lonely in a crowd feeling, but you can never, like, if I want, it's a beautiful day and I don't have anything to do, I'm going to go lie in the grass at the park. Great. There, you'll be surrounded by people. And yeah. dogs, and you'll get hit with a frisbee. <laughs> I'll never be alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. L.A. was that the, uh, but the drastic di distances between any two things. Yeah, a lot. There's... That's a lot of the wasted time was in the car. Yep, the forty minutes to drive six miles. That thing. Exhausting. I lived in Long Beach and I liked Long Beach. Long Beach was nice because you know you could I could go to LA and do LA stuff. I could go do shows in LA and then I could get away. Yeah. It took a long time to get into LA proper. Look at it on the map. They're not fucking far. Yeah. No. You and it's should, for cars. And they still it still doesn't work. You should be able to do it. But there's no good way. Yeah. And the best somebody will come is it'll be 40 minutes to go somewhere. And then somebody will go, oh, I know a little secret. You do this and that. And it's only 35 minutes. Like, yeah. okay, you're, you're a fucking genius. There's no winning. No. But what a goddamn good song. Such a good song. Goddamn good song. Um, I'm good. I will definitely say it's in his top five songs. Yeah. 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 I can't um, believe it was this long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, that we were so we made a list, Alex and I, or I made a list, but you made a list. Come on, take the credit. The things that we could still talk about. And there's some that I knew we hadn't talked talked about. Like so last we last week we did it last week. Two months ago. Last yeah, yeah. <laughs> last time, last week. Yeah, we did a uh, you know, we didn't start to fire. Man, what did we do a good job analyzing that? Man, everybody understands it now. And now they get it. <laughs> but I was thinking, like, how do we not talk about this? And what I think happened is Alex and I took a similar approach to the show when we started it, which is, well, I don't want to burn all the great ones right away. Right. And then it just got forgotten about in the mess. We both have, like, our favorite hidden gems or hidden turds. Yeah. And Spent a lot of time chasing those down. Yep. And then you get 80 episodes in and you're like, well, we must have done the great ones. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you want to do trivia first or would you like to speculate about why this lovely lady is here? My goodness. Like, let me put my, get my glasses to work. <laughs> is that Joan Jett? It sure is. Okay. And I'll give you one hint that might do it. This is a promo pick for a documentary about her. <laughs> wow. Well, what I, would you 
there, I guess, what would you call a documentary about Joan, Joan Jett? I, would, I think I would call it uh, Joan Jett. Yeah. Or Joan of uh, <laughs> uh, Black, Black Heart. Would I call it Black Heart? That'd be a good guess, but it's not that. But you're on the right track about knowing it's got to be something she's known for. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love rock and roll. She does love rock and roll. And and what did it give her? <laughs> uh, uh, fame and a career and money. Yeah, but not negative. It gave her something negative. <laughs> something wrong? Negative? Ne it gave she her doesn't something. care. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, it gave her something negative, but she doesn't care. She didn't care. It gave her a uh, heartache. Uh, maybe you don't know as many Joe Jet songs as I do. No, um, unless it gave her Crimson and Clover. <laughs> well, how would she be known? Like what what like if she was known in a negative light, what do you call that? No, oh, they should have a bad reputation. She does. She has a bad reputation. Uh-huh. For breaking little hearts like the one in me? Well, she's got a bad reputation. That's yeah. the important part. You got a bad reputation. Uh, James, is it James? No. Yeah. No, I'm thinking an entirely different lyric that doesn't have the word reputation in it. Yeah, literally, bad reputation is the lyric. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, only the good die young. No, is it got bad reputation? Really? Bad reputation, not bad. Said no, that all that I could give you was a reputation. Oh yeah, this is bad reputation. <laughs> Fuck, I can't find it. In fact, it gives you a bad reputation wherever it is you live. In a, oh, a bad reputation in the neighborhood. Oh, fuck. Now you've got it. You just got to pick out the song. Got it. I just can't hear the melody. Is it on An Innocent Man? I think that's the album it's on. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Sorry. Uh, 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 you're only human. That's right. We did it. Second wind. Uh, steel trap. Yeah. I think it'd be fair to say that second wind, you're only human, I like better than you, huh? Um, yeah, probably. I think it's all right. There were two bonus tracks on the Greatest Hits LP. Uh, and the other one was better, I thought. Yeah. What's the other one? I can't remember, but it's better. <laughs> <laughs> um is it until the night no uh maybe it sounds like that but it's not that yeah i was just a soft spot for the song of course because at the time i was uh you know sad sure and uh, uh the video is goofy as hell <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you want that's the one where he appears as a ghost with a harmonica playing piano. And a, and a little hat, right? He's got a little hat. Yep. yep. And it's a, it's a wonderful life pastiche sort of a thing. Yeah. And you that was the first time I would realize watching that video. I was like, oh, he's short. He's a very short guy. <laughs> he's a tiny feller. Did I you see the I news did. article about him singing to Christy Brinkley? I did. That's very sweet. That was very nice. There was some coverage on New York One, our local channel here. That's I'm great. Excited that they for you get to along. encounter all these New York things. Me too. I'm hoping, God, I'm hoping this is still going on. I hope the Knicks are still in the playoffs. They are playing uh, in a few minutes. They in have two games. So I will tell you, I'm I am not a New Yorker, but I love basketball, and New York has been one of those teams. 
Along with the 76ers, ironically, they are both teams that I would I hope would do well in the playoffs because yeah. they're old franchises that have been shitty for so long. Yeah, and they are scrapping. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, in a way I can't lose as far as like the joy I feel, but also I can't win because I don't want either team to be out. I know. Yeah. I'm biased. I'm obviously hoping the Knicks pull it off tonight. So do I, and I hope so because my friend Walker, we, you know, the joke we make is, have been making for years is that they, he hopes someday that New York gets a professional basketball team. <laughs> sure. yeah. Because they were such, Isaiah Thomas destroyed that team. Yes. And what's his name? Dolan, is that the owner's name? Yeah. What a dipshit. Whole dipshit. Ruined a lot of things. That guy's just Maybe. fucking stupid. They are back. They are fierce, and they're scrappy and weird. Yeah, they have like a tall guy who dominates everything. They're just like a bunch of hardworking idiots <laughs> who don't match. Yeah, they feel they like together. it feels like the ghost of John Starks, who I think is still alive. But regardless, the ghost of Don, John Starks got in everybody's body and went, "Hey, let's all just be hardworking dicks," and it's yeah. great. Great. Um, here's my trivia question. Bust. Uh, the song Big Man on Mulberry Street, speaking of being in a New York state of mind, uh, was Billy Joel was inspired to write that song uh, while watching a TV show. Do you know what TV show? Andy Griffith. No hint. That song later appeared on that show in a dream sequence. Oh. Okay, so obviously it wasn't Andy Griffith because that was long after that was off the air. Big man on Bulberry Street. Monk? <laughs> this would be what, about 1988, 89? Okay. So let's, let's try this again. It wasn't Frasier, there's no way. Oh, well, you're getting in the right era. <laughs> Yeah. Frazier. Probably wasn't very good. Was it very good? Uh, yes. Okay, so it's a well-regarded show. Well-regarded, very good program. Okay. Too late for Barney Miller, so it wasn't Barney Miller. Um, God. Barky. Huh? Yeah, I know that guy. That guy, I know. He's. I think he's yelling the answer, and he's irritated that I'm not understanding because he knows this. He's very into '80s trivia. Yeah, but I don't the like fact... your chances. Huh? I don't like your chances. Okay, uh, everything that's happened so far. Happy days again. Moonlighting. Moonlighting. Okay. In yeah, I never sequence, got there. Uh, they fucking danced to it, and uh, that episode. This bonus question contained one other Billy Joel song. Um, my life. It ties very tightly to this episode. Oh, okay. T ties. Um... Oh, New York State of Mind. State of Mind. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. It's you know, you're right. I get the connection. I get how it connects. See it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough really to one spot. For one. Um, <laughs> the Knicks uh, have uh, tipped off, and they are leading early in the first quarter. So I want to be in a bar or a restaurant or whatever that has a TV that the Knicks are on with you watching a game. If that if that could happen, obviously timing is about it. But yeah, if we can I'm do, it. I'm so delighted that that. They're playing meaningful basketball this year. That's just and nice. I, yes. Give me one second. I'm and here's a very LA thing for a guy who lived in LA. I'm delighted the Lakers aren't. <laughs> That's very LA. Yeah. And so I like LeBron James as a human being because he's clearly a good person. Yes, he's a good guy. He does so much good. There's a part of me that's always been 
irritated and I cannot help it. And I think I'm right with his shop around mentality of this is how I, you know, how I go out and get all these titles. Well, let me get four other guys who are really good. Or let me go to this team that was on the cusp. Yeah. Jordan didn't do that. Bird didn't do that. Patrick fucking Ewing didn't do that. And Patrick Ewing could have yeah. justified doing it. Fully. You can't uh, purchase chemistry. Yeah. And there's something just... Bird got his championships by suffering and ruining his legs. <laughs> Magic, <laughs> Magic was a seminal transformative talent, but... You would have been sad to see him in any other uniform. That would have broke your heart. Yeah. And he wouldn't do that to you. Jordan did, and we pretend he didn't. But he was a bull. And then that later season, Jordan was still an entertaining player, but that's just silly. <laughs> LeBron is just, man, he is he just goes around. I mean, I don't see him leaving the Lakers because you know he likes to be in movies and he's weirdly good in them. So Yeah. But he'll bully them into hiring people he likes. Yeah. I hope yeah. he doesn't steal any of my Knicks. Oh, yeah. Does it poach? Yeah. I would think. Yeah. I don't know that they could. Like, I don't think they could. I could see them going out to the Sixers and get trying to get Embiid. But I also can see them not being able to afford it. Yes. But hey, then again. Song? Huh? What song are we doing next? Oh, here's what I want to talk about next week. Let's do an episode because let's do an episode where we talk about the concert we just saw. Oh, there you go. Perfect. And I will take some pictures that I'm allowed to use. So it'll be mostly you and me at yeah. Madison Square Garden, not anything like of uh, not Billy Joel, because I don't think we'd be allowed to do that. Yeah. And and I'll 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 share them with you folks. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna get to see Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden and Alex is going to be with me, and we will be full of pizza. The dream. That's right. 